Good morning. I'm Nathan Varilla, a reference archivist here at the Library of Virginia, and today I'll be covering genealogical websites and databases available through the Library of Virginia. This is the second part of the three-part series of genealogy webinars developed by the Library of Virginia in response to the cancellation of our beginning and intermediate genealogy workshops. Join us again on May 8th as Community Outreach Specialist Ashley Ramey explores the library's website, including the catalog and digital collections. Today, I'll be providing an introduction to the Library of Virginia, tips on navigating the LVA website for access to genealogical databases and websites, and a glimpse of the genealogical websites and databases you might make use of in the course of your research. The Library of Virginia was established by the General Assembly in 1823 and holds approximately 129 million manuscripts and 3 million printed resources. Our normal business hours are Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and you can check our website anytime for closings, directions, and programs. The Library of Virginia's website is www.lva.virginia.gov and you can access many of the websites I'll be covering today by clicking on using the, using the collections in the section labeled for the public. The websites, the websites accessible from the LVA page are located in the section databases and eBooks. And as you can see, the links in the section of that page are grouped into several different categories. There are two broad groups of databases and websites I'll be covering, subscription databases and free access sites. We'll start with the subscription databases, beginning with Ancestry.com, the largest provider of family history and personal DNA testing, and provides information found in historical records, family trees, etc. This site requires a paid subscription for full access, but the Library of Virginia offers institutional access to on-site users, as do many other libraries, so check with your local library to see if you can access Ancestry there. For researchers located in Virginia and working with Virginia Vital Records, the Library of Virginia has partnered with Ancestry to make these records available through Ancestry for Virginians. This is what the basic search page on Ancestry looks like. And using my grandfather's name, Walter Eugene Plyler, as an example, this is what the results page looks like. As you can see, there is a broad range of records that appear as a result of a simple search. Now I'd like to cover the four main subcategories of records available on Ancestry, beginning with the census records. U.S. Census records are released in full to the public after 72 years, so the most recent census records available in full are from the 1940 census, with the 1950 census scheduled to be released in 2022. The example search I used was for Lydia Friedman, my wife's grandmother, who was born in 1920 and lived in Brooklyn. Filling in additional information on the search page helps narrow down helps narrow down your search results when you're searching for names that might be common. In this instance, Friedman is a common Jewish surname, so I added additional information to help discover the Friedman family I was specifically looking for. On the results page, the entries I was searching for are the first and third on the page. And clicking on View Image for the 1940 census brings up this entry. Lydia is highlighted in yellow, and the other members of the household are highlighted in green. In 1940, Lydia Friedman was living at 67 St. Paul Place in Brooklyn with her parents, Max and Sophie, and her older sister, Caroline. From the census record, we can see that Lydia's parents were born in and emigrated from Russia, but Lydia and Caroline were born in New York. The census records also provides further information, such as age, race, renter or owner status for the household, the ability to read and write, employment or student status, and occasionally the language spoken at home. 
A previous census example I've used was the entry for my wife's grandfather, whose parents also emigrated from Russia and were listed in the 1930 census as speaking Jewish, in this case, Yiddish, at home. The second major category of records is vital records, births, deaths, marriages, and divorces primarily. These records are subject to privacy protection, so what's available may only be a text-only index entry instead of a scan of the original record. In Virginia, birth records are privacy protected for 100 years, while deaths, marriages, and divorces are protected for 25 years. The privacy protection for other states will vary. The example search I have here is for Conchetta Aineri, who is my father's great aunt, married to my great grandfather's brother, Carmine. The additional information I've added to the search is her date of death, 1964, and place of death, Altoona, Pennsylvania. The second result leads us to a digital image of her death certificate. This example shows the importance of considering alternative spellings of a person's name because Conchetta's last name was misspelled on the original record and thus misspelled on the results page. The next category of records available is military records. The example search I have here is for my great grandfather, Davold Ossel, who lived in Venango County, Pennsylvania. The third result is for his World War I draft card, which again shows a misspelled name, but as is evident from the original record, the misspelling is a result of, the, of his first name being misinterpreted and an incomplete erasure on the original form. The fourth category of records is immigration records. The example search is for my great-grandfather, Antonio Aineri, born in 1889 and emigrated in 1921. He emigrated through Ellis Island, but records for many other ports of entry to the United States are also available here. Knowledge of his date of birth and port of entry are important here, as there was another Antonio Aineri who was four years older and emigrated through Boston in 1920. The result that shows my great-grandfather is once again misspelled, as his entry on the ship's manifest was subject to a handwritten correction and subsequently misinterpreted. The last part of Ancestry.com I want to review today is Ancestry for Virginians. This partnership between the Library of Virginia and Ancestry provides free access to Virginia vital records information to Virginia residents, determined by IP address used to access the page. You can access Ancestry for Virginians through the LVA website, through the databases and eBooks section of the Using the Collections page, by opening the Biographical and Genealogical section and scrolling down to Ancestry Institution, where you'll see a link for Ancestry for Virginians. The search page appears the same as the basic search page on Ancestry.com, but the results will be drawn from only a few collections specifically related to Virginia. An Ancestry username and password are required to view the records, but this collection is free to Virginia residents. Fold3 is a subscription database that provides access to military records. It has U.S. military records from the Revolution through the Vietnam War, with some records available for more, mil more recent military operations and a few non-military records. A subscription is required, but it is available for on-site users through the LVA Reading Room menu. The example search I have here is for my grandfather, Walter Eugene Plyler, and the first result is his World War II draft card. Clicking on Image provides a scanned copy of the original record. There are also many genealogical websites that are free to use. While some require creation of an account, there are others that do not. In this section, I'll cover some of those free access genealogical websites. 
Virginia Heritage is a consolidated database of electronic finding aids for archival collections in Virginia's major research institutions. Here's a basic search page and an example of a results page. FamilySearch provides free access to genealogical research provided by the LDS Church. While it is free to use, it does require creation of an account. Cindy's List is a collaborative list of links to genealogical research sites. Here is the entry page, the alphabetical list of categories, the entry page for topics about Italy, and finally, the page of general research resources for research on Italy and Italian genealogy. Find a Grave provides final interment information from around the world. The example I have here is for my grandmother. The full information page includes a photo of her marker, dates of birth and death, and information about the cemetery, as well as a link to her parents' gravestone. Find a Grave also includes user-contributed information about cemeteries, shown here with a cemetery in Altoona, where my grandmother and great-grandparents are interred. Genealogy.com hosts online forums for genealogical research as well as genealog genealogical articles by topic. Among the forums are those for surnames. Here I have the Plyler Forum, and this particular post I've highlighted is from a cousin, as her grandfather and my grandfather were brothers. Next I have the entry page to the genealogical article section of the website, followed by a listing of genealogy classes available, and finally, the beginning of the article on reading place names. US Gen Web provides links to state genealogical websites, which in turn provide links to county genealogical websites. As an example of a state genealogical website, here is the entry page to VA Gen Web, the state genealogical website for Virginia which leads to a page of links for the county genealogical websites. This is an example of a county website, in this case, Campbell County, Virginia. And the next slide shows a continuation of the sections of links beyond the entry point of the page. The Ellis Island section of the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation website contains passenger lists of the immigrants and crew members who came through Ellis Island from 1892 through 1957. Creation of an account is required to view digitized versions of any of the original records available. I have an example search for my great-grandfather. As you can see, there were several people sharing his name who came through Ellis Island between 1921 and 1955. My great-grandfather is the last one on this list. The manifest from the SS Ferdinando Palaciano was one of the digitized original records I showed in an earlier search. The next site provides historical maps of the United States, showing the evolution of county boundaries through time. This is important information to have, as local records remain with the issuing locality, even if jurisdictional lines change. To give an example, Clark County, Virginia was formed from Frederick County in 1836. All records from what is now Clark County from before 1836 are a part of the Frederick County collection. I have here the entry page to the historical maps of Virginia, including the county boundary evolution beginning in 1617, and here again with the map from 1732. Each state has a key of county abbreviations toward the bottom of the page. The Library of Virginia provides access to historical newspaper databases, which can serve as a resource for historical obituaries. The database, these databases are always available to on-site users, and many of them are available remotely to Virginia residents with an active Library of Virginia library card. 
The databases are grouped under the Newspapers and Magazines menu in the Databases and Ebooks section on the landing page using the collections. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. While our building is currently closed to the public, we are still available for reference questions and record requests by telephone and email. If you have questions regarding library cards, please contact Circulation. And when we reopen, we will resume interlibrary loan operations. If you have questions about this presentation, you can post them on the library's Finding Your Virginia Roots Facebook group page, where archivists will be answering them after this presentation. And if you're not already a member, we encourage you to join our Facebook group at any time.